Kelsey Brennan Wessels and welcome to this special edition of Earth from Space on the European Space Agency Web TV. Last year we had the pleasure of having astronaut Paolo Nespoli join our program to discuss the astronauts' view of our planet from the International Space Station. We talked about the difference between an astronaut's view of Earth from the space station at about 400 kilometers above the planet and observations by satellites at about twice that height. With me in the studio today to continue our discussion is astronaut Luca Barmitano, who spent over 160 days in space just last year. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure being here. Now, Luca, of course, you were in space for 166 days, I believe. That's that is correct. correct yes. number between May and November of 2013. That's right. On the Volare mission. Can you tell me a bit about the purpose of that mission? Well, the purpose of that mission, uh, I like to say, is uh, made up of three parts. Uh, on the space station, we, we do technology, we do science, and if those two were not enough, we do exploration, which is my favorite part. And we did all of that in my mission. We, did, um, we tested and tried a lot of new technology. We performed over 40 hours uh, weekly of science, 200 experiments, and we did exploration because what we're doing on the space station is to try test this technology and come up with science for future exploration when we will leave Earth and go towards um, planetary exploration. Like Mars. Well, hopefully one day we'll be able to go there. Wow, okay. And, of course, while you were on the ISS, the International Space Station, you kept us updated uh, via Twitter and blog posts about your activities, but also with some beautiful photographs. And there's one up on the screen right now of Sicily, and you took this, I believe, one of uh, within the first weeks that you were in space. What was it like to get this new perspective of Earth or of an island that you know so well? Well, it's, uh, it is interesting because uh, of course, I come from a, from a flying background. I'm, I'm an Italian Air Force pilot. I uh, was a, a fighter pilot and a test pilot. And so I'm quite used to seeing uh, images from, from above. And flying, flying in southern Italy, Assisi is a pretty common sight. And I have seen it from, from above, up to 40,000 feet. But nothing could have prepared me for, uh, for the sight that just came up to my eyes on, on one of the very first weeks uh, that I was up in the space station. The story is actually uh, interesting because there is such a thing called as the beta angle, which is the angle at which the sun impacts the space station. When this angle is really high, it means that we are constantly illuminated and we cannot see the ground. So um, right after getting on the space station, we were in such a condition. And so for about 10 days, we had a hard time looking down and seeing anything. And then all at once, we came out of this condition. I was taking pictures of Africa. And then looking up, I saw Cyprus, I saw Greece, and then turning left, I saw Sicily, as we see it on the screen today, completely bathed in sunlight during sunset. And it, it was an amazing feeling. It, this is the place where I was born, where I grew up and I could see all at once in just one, uh, in one of the windows of Cupola and I just couldn't stop taking pictures. Okay, well this photo and many other photos are so popular. Is being a photographer a prerequisite for becoming an astronaut? Absolutely not. The great thing about becoming an astronaut is that they teach you everything you need to know. So you come with your personal background of experiences, which you share with everybody else, but then um, the space agencies train you to become an astronaut so that everybody uh, disregarding where um, where everybody comes from, scientists, doctors, um, engineers or pilots, they all get a common background. And for me, um, photography was certainly not one of my of, of my hobbies, but it became one when I when I learned how to use the cameras thanks to the training that I received. Are you still taking pictures today on the ground? Um, I am not, and I, I'm still looking for such an, an inspiration as the one I found on the space station. I'm sure that's a hard one to beat. <laughs> now, of course, let's look at a couple of other nice images. Here we have one that you took over Australia. Can you tell us a bit about this image? Yes, this is uh, Uluru, also known as uh, Ayers Rock. And I'm particularly proud of this picture because I was hunting for it. Uh, because of the because of the time zone that we use on the space station, we use UTC, which is also the Greenwich Mean Time. So in order to pass over Australia during the daytime, you, you, you have to 
to get it, uh, you know, to stay up late or um, uh, be lucky enough that it's early um, in Australia and, and and you're still up and try to take a picture. And also you have to have a right pass, you have to be around the area. And the third condition is that you have to be able to find it. So the one day I was, I was really, I, I knew that I was gonna fly over the area. I took my camera, in this case it's a 400 millimeters lens and I was hunting for it. Just like, a, just like a hunter in a safari is looking for his fairy prey. I was waiting for Uluru and I took a lot of picture and there were other formations that looked like it, but then I saw this one and I, and I knew that that, it, that was what I was looking at. And I took these pictures and this is the one that came out best and then I, I published it and I was really proud of it. It's beautiful, it looks like a painting almost, doesn't it? And Earth is indeed beautiful and our pictures unfortunately don't even show how beautiful it is when seen with your own eyes. Of course. Now how do you orient yourself geographically when you're in the space station? I'm sure it must be a bit disorienting to be going around so fast, cloud cover, oceans, mid, you know, deserts, land masses. Do you know what you're looking at all the time or is there some way to find out? So luckily enough technology comes to, to help us. Uh, we have these computers on board that are connected to the GPS on board the station. And at the same time we have this program called World Map that gives us a very good idea of where the space station is um, in, in compared to the ground uh, at, at, at any given time. Now, we can zoom in up to a certain level in order to really have a, get an idea of what we're looking at, but uh, of course the details just disappear. So, we, in general we have a pretty good idea, um, but uh, it's not an exact science when we look at the screen. We, we have to get used to looking outside and trying to recognize features and guide our eyes in order to find a specific target, a city, uh, a lake or a formation like in this case. The, the only thing that complicates everything is when we go into cupola, we are really upside down and so the earth is above and so everything is upside down on the screen when, when we look at it and we have to reorient our brain. But you learn to do that. Of course. Now uh, let's take a look at another image up on the screen. What do we see here? This is in Kansas. I, I was trying to, uh, to publish a picture of the United States because a lot of people were asking me how come you have all these pictures of Europe but none of the United States. So um, I decided to, um, to play a game and I posted a picture that could really be anything anywhere in the world. But then I, I, I decided to give it a little bit of, of flavor and I said flying over Kansas is looking like a Mondrian uh, painting. and uh, at, that, that, that gave the, the picture a, a whole new flavor and color and people really appreciated that. Mm -hmm. Of course this is an area that uh, I particularly like when looking at satellite images. In fact up on the screen now we have one from the Landsat satellite, the American Landsat satellite. But this of course is in false color. This uh, we, we But it's still pretty and it looks like a work of art. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, absolutely. It was on my desktop on my uh, computer for a while actually. But the, here the false color shows uh, the different types of vegetation which is one of course one of the applications of uh, Earth observation satellites. Um, let's look at another image of uh, agriculture. A bit of a different setting. What do we see? Here we are flying over Egypt I believe and uh, um, what we have is, uh, is a a picture taken with a much smaller lens and this is really it's almost the view that we get from from the space station when we look with our naked eyes and what caught, caught my eye uh, here and my attention is that these geometric shapes that appear in the middle of the desert so you have these, these very bright colors and desert may sound may sound a place like where there's no life there's nothing but in reality there's so much going on there and and this, this picture shows that a little bit of color changes completely the structure of, of a picture that you're taking or that you're looking at. And I call this picture the, 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 the Space Invaders. And it was funny because a lot of people took, took the idea literally and thought that I was talking about aliens invading Earth. But what I was referring to was that sh the geometric shape reminded me of the old video games from the 80s that was called <laughs> Space Invaders. Of course. <laughs> A great one. Now, of course, uh, just I believe days before uh, coming back to Earth, you took another image, this one again of Sicily, of your home island. What can you tell me about this one? Yes, I published a lot of pictures of Sicily, of course, you know, that's where I was born, and where I grew up. Um, this one um, was one of the last passes that I was going to, to do over Sicily before 
before coming, coming back to the Earth. And only days earlier, we had a great eruption of the, the great volcano Etna, uh, which is right, very close to my hometown. And so uh, when I took this picture and, and then I published it, it was really my way of saying, saying goodbye to the space station, to say uh, hello to Earth again and getting ready, almost uh, spiritually, to going back to Earth. Okay, now of course, speaking about Etna and of Etna erupting, uh, one of the applications, in fact, for Earth observation data is looking at volcanic eruptions and ash, and uh, in particular sulfur dioxide, which helps us uh, sort of follow where these volcanic ash, these plumes, are moving, and this can help with, um, you know, airlines, because of course ash isn't good for jet engines. So here we see an image. This is of. Um, we have an optical image where we clearly see mm -hmm. Italy, we clearly yeah. see uh, uh, Etna and the volcanic plume. And then we have one, an image from the GOME satellite, I'm sorry, from the GOME instrument on ERS, which shows sulfur dioxide. As a pilot, I can tell you that um, this information is uh, very, very valuable for us because Indeed, the volcanic ash is uh, very dangerous for jet engines. Mm -hmm, absolutely. Now, of course, um, on the show that we usually do, the Earth from Space show, we show a satellite image and we describe what we see. But today, I'm going to put you on the spot. We're going to put up an image. This is from the ALO satellite on Japan. Can you tell us what we see? Well, I would think that what I'm looking at is my hometown again. That's uh, Mount Etna in a, in a very uh, a very good close-up, what would look like uh, uh, a picture taken from the ISS with a 400 millimeters. So that's that's Catania in the lower uh, right corner, and then top right we have again uh, Etna, Mount Etna, the volcano, and the the, the, the plains around Catania, which uh, used to be uh, filled with uh, orchards of orange uh, orange groves. Uh, of course, for somebody like me, that's a very easy, easy picture to recognize. Of course, let's do a close-up here of Catania. Do you recognize some structures there? I recognize, of course, I recognize the, the port. I recognize the, the main street that crosses Catania is uh, straight downtown. And wow, this is a, an amazing definition. Uh, the technology on the satellites, it, it's really amazing. Mm -hmm. We're going to do one more close-up here. Do you know what that is? Uh, wow, is that my the place where I was born? It sure That's was. That's <laughs> no, isn't it? It is. Uh, and that is actually the first time that I that I look look at such a close up of my the place where I was born because I only I was only born there. I never actually lived there, so it's uh, it's surprising. This is great. <laughs> Good. Now, Luca, uh, another question I wanted to ask you is, of course, you were recently at the San Remo at Italy San Remo Music Festival. Can you tell me a bit about your uh, appearance there? Absolutely. Uh, I was invited to make an appearance in Sanremo um, because the theme of the, of the festival was beauty. And in many of my pictures, my blogs or my, uh, my social media posts, I talked about beauty. I, I talk about an indescribable beauty. I said many times that maybe not even a poet could describe the site appropriately because we just don't have the right words for it. And so um, the, the, the producers and the authors decided to give me a chance to try and describe this beauty and the feelings. And I thought it was a great way to uh, a fantastic stage to talk to a lot of people about why it's so important for, for humans, for us, to go to space, to continue space exploration, and to ask ourselves, what is beyond those horizons that, that we see every day? and what, even more important, what's beyond the horizons that we don't see. And um, my, the, the name of my, my mission was, is Volare, which means flying. And uh, Amelia Earhart's, um says, said, a, said a sentence that to me is really the sum of exploration. And it says, flying means no, uh, no lines, but only horizons. So I think that sums it up pretty much. Absolutely. Well, Luca, thank you so much for joining us today. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me. And to our audience, remember that to learn more about human spaceflight or Earth observation, you can visit our website at www.esa.int.